It is morning and we are leaving. We are heading to Seattle. On one fourth of a tank of gas. Hopefully we'll make it there with just that. Well, we made it halfway with three quarters of a tank. So I don't think we'll make it the rest of the way with one quarter. Let's try. Okay. The first cache of day two is at a rest stop just a little bit north of Eugene. It's somewhere in these plants. There it is. Aha, got it. Nice. Yay. Yay. We got some snacks in the road. I'm gonna show you where we keep them. Yum. It's bright. It's nice. I'd rather it be bright than cloudy and overcast. Am I recording? Yep. Anyway, this cache is called Amazing Ponds. And, um, the maze of amazing is su uh, surrounded by dashes. So, a maze made of ponds? Yeah, that's what it is. Um, it's very interesting because they have, like, little ponds that are shaped like L-shaped, like they're shaped kind of like letters with fingers and lines. And so the land in between the ponds makes a maze, and it's 55 acres. And uh, there's a cache hidden on one of the things, so you have to like walk around and find it. But because it's so big, it's hard to tell where you are in the maze. But we have GPS with a view of the maze itself, so we can kind of look at it from above and figure out how to get there. It would be pretty cool though. I'll show you more later once we're in the maze. So there's a map. That's where we are. Right there. And the cache is hidden like on the end of that or something. So it's not too complicated to walk over there and there, but this is kind of a cool area. A maze of ponds. It's cool. Anyway. And then there's the actual ponds over there that we need to start from. So let's figure this thing out. We're a little further into the maze. It's pretty cool. We're going to go this way though. Here's a pretty good example of maze-like lakes. This kind of turns over that way and goes back that way again. This is a dead end here, that land. We had to come across and come down this way and come here. If we would have continued down that road and then turned this way, there's another lake over here that we would have not been able to go to. So we've got to kind of go up this way and then turn over here. See that water over there? So we gotta go above that. So, yeah. We're almost there though. Oh, and you can see, it's over here too, it's kinda cool. So there's that lake over there that turns, goes down that way, and then it comes across this way and turns over here. So yeah, complicated shaped lakes. Pretty cool place though. We made it to the end of the maze. And here's this landscape around here. I want to try and find a uh, an easier way out. Or a faster way. You want to do that? I guess so. Okay, we'll explore more of the... There's a trail right there. Yeah. Alright. We're leaving now. Okay, so this way that I'm going right now is either going to save us time or we're not going to be able to go this way and we're going to have to walk back and take even more time to get back. So hopefully it uh, 
turns out to be a shortcut. I don't know. We'll find out. Whoa, there's water. So it's a little bit overgrown, but not impassable. I just don't know where Jimmy is. He's somewhere over there. These are all blackberries. Where did he go? He was right behind me. There he is. Let's see what's this way. What'd you do? I like tripped over a blackberry bush. Oh. Could be a cool place. And hopefully, remember that road I was walking on when I first introduced this place? Yeah, this is getting us around the, um, maybe. <laughs> so hiking on big, wide, well-used trails, aren't we? Really... What? Oh yeah, there was train tracks right next to here, wasn't there? Well anyway, this is the kind of hiking that I like. Narrow unused trails or very little mm. what muddy. yes it's muddy there's also a train and I think hopefully we're getting close to the road we need to just continue on um, in some direction <laughs> Oh, slippery. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's the trail. This must continue. We are almost back. Okay. Okay, so we've made it out of the ponds. And if we come out in the right spot after this little trail here, we should come right out to Jimmy's car. We're pretty close, hopefully. Yep, there it is. That was a much easier, well, I don't know about easier, but it was shorter, definitely. Instead of walking all the way down that road, and then coming around, we just kind of walked along the edge and came right back. Right back to the car. <coughs> well, that took a little longer than I thought, but now we must continue our journey to Seattle. Entering Washington. Ooh, we're in Washington. That was easy. Ow. Ow, let's go. We're in Washington. It's our first Washington cache. And uh, there isn't really many places to park, so we just kind of park like that. Found it. You found it? Yeah, it's right. Right in between there. Cool. Got it. First Washington cache. Yeah. Good coordinates too. It's saying zero feet right here. Nice. Second cache in Washington. This one is just directly on the other side of I-5. Very close by. The reason why we're doing this one next is because this will complete the I-5 challenge cache. So once we find this one, it's done. Yeah, I'm gonna look for it. This is so interesting, like giant adventure. We ate at Burger King and now Mike is driving. So interesting. We have to find five more to get up to 999 finds before we get to Seattle. 
I'm going to record the rest of the way, and then we'll just fast it's forward. Not, there's not enough memory on the, on the thing. I'll do it anyway. Oh, ran out of memory. Okay, we're going to a travel bug hotel that is supposed to have 17 trackables. Is that yes, right? Yes, supposed to have 17. It's probably right. I mean, Oh, well, there's like pears on the ground. Is it there? I think this is it. U.S. Department of Geodata? That's not a real thing. What is... <laughs> Who's the Department of Geodata? <laughs> See? Look at that. That's pretty cool. It's actually a pretty nice one. Swag room. Travel yeah. bug suite. Look at that. There's yeah. travel bugs in the side. There's actually travel bugs. And is there is, any travel bugs in the this, swag? No, this is the swag room. There's no travel bugs in here. It's all stuff. That's that's a good one. I like this. Yeah, I'll favorite it. Let's take them all, Jimmy. You want to take all the trackables? Yeah. I don't think there's 17, though. We are going for cash number 999. It is 50 feet away. And uh, we need to like... Over here. I don't know if you can see anything. But yeah, this is cash number 999. My GPS. It's hard to record, look at your flashlight, and look at your GPS all at the same time. And look for a geocache. It's like I'm multitasking to the extreme. Note. Do, do a good turn daily. I don't know what that means. Maybe it's a. Uh, Found it? Ah, oh, there it is. A good turn. Yeah. Flip this over. Uh, that, was yeah, good. Yeah. that was a good turn. Okay, that's cash number 999. Tomorrow we're getting number 1000, which is Ground Speed Headquarters. Yup. Yeah. Really <laughs> anyway, we are here at this the place Days Inn. This looks fancier than the last one. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. It's a little too fancy, I think. But we're at Kent, Washington. See? Days in. So, this is where we're staying for the night. This place is much bigger than the other place. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, there are the beds, and uh, there's the bathroom, there's the door, there's a mirror right here. See a mirror? Do you see? Do you see the mirror? Audience, do you see the mirror? It's right there.